No, the rapture will not be on June 16th, 2024, Pentecost. Howdy and welcome back to Grafter Branch Ministry. As always, Scotty Herb here. But if this is your first time tuning into Grafter Branch, welcome. This is a channel where I myself and my wife Hannah Herb dedicate our lives to studying the King James Bible on various different topics. Now, today's study topic, debunking this thing on that there is going to be no Pentecost rapture. Uh, or Shabbat rapture. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven reads, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Understand when it, the time comes to pass and the date wasn't that date, the, the rapture didn't occur on June 16th, 2024. Well, here we are and we're still here. There's gonna be a lot of people that become fearful, that become worrisome. This is to get you built up in the word of God, to have a sound mind, okay, and rely on the power that is of Jesus Christ, looking for that blessed hope, okay? We don't need to go and chase different dates and try and uh, make everything prominent in such a way. Uh, there's many different people on YouTube and there's blogs being done about all this. This guy just posted it uh, Tuesday, June 11th, 2024. Uh, more spring 2024, heavenly signs tied to the rapture and Shabbat. Um, Shabbat being the Jewish uh, tradition of Pentecost. Okay, and they're looking at these signs in the heavens. It's uh, quite preposterous. They, they have scripture but then they turn to the, the stars, the moons, the planets, right? And we have scripture against this. Uh, go with me to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 9, or Deuteronomy chapter 4, excuse me, Deuteronomy chapter 4, right? Uh, verse 2, it says, Ye shall not add unto the words which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you, okay? So we keep the word of God by the word of God, worshiping no other than what is commanded of us in scriptures. Down here in verse, verse 19, uh, and lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even the host of heaven, shouldst be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Okay, he doesn't want you to become in idolatry. Okay, that's what's in context and start worshiping and serving other gods. This actually ended up happening in 2 Kings 23. And we're we're told not to do this for a reason. 2 Kings 23, verse 5. And he put down the idolatrous priests. Yes, they're idolaters, who the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burned incense unto Baal, to work to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the host of heaven. And that's very much what a lot of these guys, when it looks familiar that they're pointing out the, the signs in heaven. Oh, they're, they're given to us for a sign so we can know the date of the rapture. No, no, they're not. Um, they're given to us for different dates and signs and so forth. And they celebrate different things. Uh, the Jews actually celebrate the beginning of a new a, a new month with the new moon, or they did back at a certain time. And they often point to Jupiter as some kind of importance when they're looking at these different things. Okay, the, the problem with this, okay, you start trying to depict all of this. There's nowhere in scripture in uh, the Pauline epistles, okay, after the gospel of Christ came, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again uh, the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Okay, and we follow Paul, right? Paul never said, look to the stars for your sign for the blessed hope. We're looking for the blessed hope indeed after Titus chapter 2, verse 13. But Paul never instructed us to look at the stars and to, to follow the planets and they're, they're going forth for the, our blessed hope. Okay, we just keep serving the Lord and we're waiting for that trumpet call. 
<clears throat> never mind when looking at these different things okay and they're often looking at the different planets and a lot of it usually deals like i said with uh, jupiter being a part of something i mean they thought that jupiter coming out of the virgo in 2015 was uh, a sign that oh the church is born well <clears throat> what does scripture have to say about jupiter go with me to acts acts chapter 19 Yes, Acts chapter 19, and this is when uh, Demetrius, the silversmith, he got together the people that uh, also made shrines for Diana, okay, and coming down in verse 34, uh, but when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried, great is Diana of the Ephesians, and when the town clerk, verse 35, and when the town clerk had appeased the people, said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is worshiper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image of which fell from, guess what, Jupiter. Okay, They're idolaters, yet still today looking at these planets. Okay, plain and simple. And when it comes to this guy right here, another false point, um, is it right here? Yeah, right after this point, he says, I received a word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit. He received a word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit who told me that I should look for the end of the Great Tribulation in the year 2027. Um, uh, so there's only three and a half years after the catching away. Scripture tells us in Daniel. Uh, let's see. The book of Daniel. Chapter 9, at the end of it, that there's 70 weeks determined upon my people, and a full week, okay, a full week is when a covenant is confirmed, a covenant is made, uh, is confirmed, excuse me, Skip. we'll stick with scriptural terms, but yeah, the full week meaning a week of years, seven years, not just three and a half, okay, like this guy in this article is trying to suppose. A little bit more um on this the kind of side note there's another guy he's trying to post the date for september 12th 2024 no doubt this guy here will probably jump right on that bandwagon when this date comes to pass and then oh no we got to move on to the next thing and people are still going to follow and and look for oh when when are they saying the date's going to be now this guy's been sticking to this date for over a year august 29th and 30th uh 2023 Okay, and uh, mind you, when he's looking at the sun and the moon, he, he uses Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 5 as his reason, uh, going back to Genesis and trying to uh, stick to that. The light that is made here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. This is not the sun. This is not the stars. This is not the moon. The, the stars, the sun and the moon are created here in Genesis 1, 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmaments of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmaments of heaven and to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. There's two different great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. This is when the sun and the moon are created, not in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. Uh, you can go and read this article because that's ultimately what this guy concludes to uh, God's design, design and history. This guy also um, ends up saying right here, this is uh, quite hypo uh, ridiculous. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. Another, another song in history designed by God now and then by the Beatles. <laughs> Yeah, a song designed by God for the Luciferians of the Beatles. Yep, that that that's going to hold weight in heaven. Um, not to mention, I mean, he's using multiple different versions, NET and NIV, and he mainly sticks with the NASB. So um, just looking at this real quick, the NASB okay, has the same problem that I've been pointing out in a lot of the modern versions. Uh, and in Exodus 6, 3, and I appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, and 
Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, Lord, I did not make myself known to them. Okay, when we look for the word Lord, the title, name, it shows up hundreds and hundreds of times, even in these other versions. Okay, in the same version that says, by my name, Lord, I was not known by known to them. Uh, we skip forward just a, a few more and we see in Genesis 14, it's actually in quotations here, Genesis 14, 20. But Adam, er, but Abraham, Abraham uh, said to the king of Sodom, this was before his name was changed to Abraham. He said to the king of Sodom, I have sworn to the Lord God, most high possessor of heaven and earth. So just real quick on that basic point right there, you can see how this Bible is lying straight to the reader's face. And if you still want to defend it and say, oh, it's technically it can be Lord or Jehovah or Yahweh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I don't care, but this text is lying to you and you use it as an authority when it comes to the things of God. Another matter is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2, some other modern versions, they have this in it where they say the day of the Lord here in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 2. King James Bible and other versions, okay, but I only care about the King James because I trust it to be the pure, perfect word of God. I don't need to go to the Hebrew or Greek. God preserved his word for me in the King James Bible. It says, as that the day of Christ is at hand. It doesn't want you to be soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, as by letter, as, uh, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. And so it's something to be troublesome when if you were going to miss out on the day of Christ. The thing is, when we look up the day of Christ, excuse me, okay, it's a, it's a day of rejoicing, we're told. A day of rejoicing, such as in Philippians 2.16, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, okay? It's something to be celebrated. It's referred to as our blessed hope in Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verse 13, okay, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the day of Christ. Please, um, let's let's also turn, okay, so if we replace this with uh, day of the Lord, okay, you have a big problem because it wants you not to be soon shaken or troubled in mind. It wants you to look for the day of the Lord, to be in a panic because you missed the day of the Lord. I would be happy uh, because the day of the Lord is judgment. Okay. And even in the NASB, it, it gives this warning. Okay. Amos chapter five, verse 18, woe to you who are, are longing for the day of the Lord. For what purpose will the day of the Lord be to you? It will be darkness and not light. And the day of the Lord will be darkness and not and not light. Uh, the same thing is in the King James Bible. I don't know why they need to change this. And it's a warning. Uh, you, you shouldn't be soon shaken or troubled in mind if you miss the day of the Lord. Okay, um, It's something actually to rejoice about if you do miss that. Um, Amos chapter 5, verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. It, uh, uh, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. But um, again, this version in the NASB and other modern versions, they try to say, oh, don't be soon shaken or troubled in mind that uh, as from letter as by us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Um, yeah, they're pointing at the wrong hope there. <clears throat> you might have seen it in passing. Okay, here's the grand finale of this. A uh, little video. We're not going to listen to it. This guy is full of idolatry. Okay, and this is how I caught wind of it. Somebody in uh, fellowship with me pointed out this matter. And this guy, he tries to set a disclaimer how uh, uh, th this is to confirm that I don't, I do not know when the Lord will return. But all throughout this, he keeps on saying, could it be? Could it be? This makes sense. This could be. Okay. Um, and then it re reeked in idolatry. And the problem with that, okay, and yes, they're supposing that that dove is the Holy Ghost throughout this. Um, they have pictures of Jesus on a cross and coming out of the tomb, You're not supposed to make images of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath. But the, and aside from that is what do you, are, are we supposed to follow those that uh, are in idolatry? Okay, no, we're, we're not. Exodus chapter 20, Okay. And yes, this is the law, and we'll look in the New Testament as well. 
Exodus 20, verse 4, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting in the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. The, the very thing is that guys like this that are making videos and they have a lot of uh, idolatry, a lot of images, they are not showing that they love the commandment of God. So why would you even turn to them to... Uh, why would you even bother turning to them to have any kind of hope in the Lord Jesus Christ? They they are putting before you a false a false god. Um, uh, in the New Testament, okay, it continues forth. Acts chapter fifteen. <clears throat> Acts chapter fifteen, verse twenty. They have the commandment, uh, but. That we write unto them that they abstain from the pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. We are to abstain from the pollution of idols. First um, Corinthians chapter six uh, talks about how know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters will inherit the kingdom of God. So why are we turning to these people to point you? to the things of God. Um, furthermore, Acts chapter 19, verse 29, or chapter 17, excuse me, Acts 17, verse 29. For as much as we are the offspring of God, okay, we're created in the similitude of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold, silver, or stone, graven by art and man's device. Okay, so anything that's graven by art and man's device, let alone gold, silver, little necklaces uh, that represent the Godhead, the any part of God, right? Uh, Jesus Christ, in whom the whole Godhead is, is found bodily. Uh, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, okay? All of those are part of the Godhead. You have any image that depicts any of those, you are committing idolatry according to the Word of God. Okay, so why do these people even bother uh, churning to this? And if you're one of them, I, I, I'm sorry. I, and I pray that you come out from the idolatry on all this. Um, the, the other thing is Pentecost is harvest, the harvest at Pentecost. You see all written in big here. And he's supposing in Revelation 14, verse 14 through 16, when uh, God sends forth the angels to reap. Uh, yeah, this is already after the catching away in the book of Revelation. Just showing this real fast and this is where a lot of the faulty logic comes in they they twist the scriptures not truly understanding or rightly dividing at all revelation chapter 4 verse 1 after this i looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which i heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and i will show these things hereafter and immediately i was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne okay bearing this in mind okay it's a picture of the rapture revelation 4 and 5 is depictions of what happens in heaven after the catching away are gathering together unto him revelation chapter 6 begins the wrath of god being poured out revelation 14 and those things that happen therein are happening to those that are still on the earth after the catching away okay and bear in mind okay the trumpet calls him right and immediately going to first corinthians 15 verse 51 just taking a look at one of the passages that talks about uh, the catching away behold i will show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment okay and immediately I was in heaven in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Yes. And he heard the first voice as it were a trumpet talking with him. Please. I pray that you lean on scripture as your final authority and not on the matters that be of man's wisdom, looking at things that we should not look at or going according to men that use idolatry or that look at planets for their rational reasoning. Those things are condemned in Scripture. Hope the message was a blessing to you. Thank you for watching. Bye now.